I'm Quailin Nassar. To whom do you belong? Do you belong to yourself? Do you belong to your family or to others? Do you belong to your boss or your job? Or do you belong to God? Today we're going to be talking with Father Michael Kalor. He is the pastor of the Presentation of Christ in East Pittsburgh. He's also on the Youth Commission for the uh, Greek metropolis of Pittsburgh, and he is also on the Executive Committee of the Orthodox Clergy Brotherhood. So Father John Abdullah is going to talk to him about to whom do we belong? We're blessed to have Father Michael Kalor from the Presentation of Christ Church in East Pittsburgh to uh, respond to Quaylin's very interesting question, to whom do you belong? Father Michael, what is this belonging business about? Well, coming from the Church of the Presentation of Christ, uh, I think we can look to that example of the church and see just from the life of Christ, uh, even from the very beginning, we know uh, to, where he, to whom he belonged, of course, uh, of Christ uh, being the Son of God and the tradition of the Jews at that time on the 40th day to be presented at the temple. And on the 40th day, Jesus was taken into the temple and received by St. Simeon, an elder who had, had been told that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. And of course, also with him was the prophetess Anna. Imagine the, that Anna and... Simeon saw this baby, looked like any other baby, wrapped the way any other baby is wrapped, coming with the uh, pigeons and, and the sacrifices of the time, and he knew that this is the savior of the world. So Christ was presented to the temple, right. you know, even by the temple, his mother, who is the temple that the housed temple. the living God, yeah. uh, comes to, to the temple, uh, and presents her, her, her child. So now we bring our children right. and we present them to God. Right. And what does the church do with them? We, uh, the, the church nurtures them. The, uh, the church takes the, the child from the uh, earliest, from the 40 days uh, after it's presented. And of course, the, the first the sacrament that they encounter, the first embrace of God is holy baptism. And holy baptism is a, a, a personal resurrection. It's a personal resurrection. It's a dying to the fallen world. And when the child comes out of the font after being immersed in the font in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it, they, they rise to God. They're claimed by God. They belong to Him. So from the very beginning, the child is dedicated to the Lord and is uh, placed in the care of the church and the godparents, of course, and, 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 the, and the parents to nurture that child so that uh, every moment can be, they, uh, they can live a life uh, uh, according to, um, shall we say, directed towards God. So when they say, to whom do we belong or to whom does that child belong, it's very clear that the child belongs to God. Not to the parents, not to the society, but to God. Even beyond that, right, exactly. And as the child grows and as the, uh, the child uh, is nurtured, by the church, by the family, and so on. They receive the, the blessings that they receive, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that they receive. It's, it's the, uh, hopefully they, they will try and take those gifts and use them for the glory of God. Could you say a little more about the Holy Spirit? We hear about being mm -hmm. baptized into Christ and putting on Christ, mm -hmm. but when we look at the prayers, we, we hear that the Holy Spirit overshadows, the Holy Spirit quickens, the Holy Spirit shares the life. So when we're baptized into Christ, we also receive the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the baptism prepares uh, us for receiving of the Holy Spirit. And it's uh, really the baptism leads us to the possibility of chrismation. Chrismation, as you know from the word Christos, being anointed. Christ literally means the anointed one, the one who is anointed. And we become anointed. It's our, our, it's our personal ordination. Uh, ordination, what St. Peter called the royal priesthood. We're all initiated into that royal priesthood of Christ. That we are given, that we become the, uh, again, the, uh, we become uh, uh, the bridge to Christ. And of course, the Holy Spirit with the Holy Chrism is taken, again, this is a tradition that goes back even into the Old Testament. When the, uh, uh, the, uh, the kings 
uh, when Samuel anointed, for example, Saul, and then later King David, when they were anointed with the holy oil. And also we read in the scripture about the laying on of hands as well, being uh, conferring the Holy Spirit uh, in the book of Acts. So and the so baby on. is baptized, mm -hmm. hands are laid upon him, exorcisms are done. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, he's breathed upon, and then he's sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, to show that the Holy Spirit lives in the child. Correct. So God initiates us into Christ's resurrection and then seals us uh, with the Holy Spirit. Can you say a little more about the sealing? Well, the sealing, uh, the, the sealing gift of the Holy Spirit is, the, uh, is what we, uh, when we're the, the priest anoints uh, the child or the person, the seal and the gift of the Holy Spirit is, is the grace that's poured. It's the free gift that God pours upon us and uh, having prepared us through the holy baptism, purifying us and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and restoring us to the image uh, of, of the image and likeness of God for which we're all created, we have the possibility then to receive the grace of the Holy Spirit. Okay. This gift, of, uh, which is nothing that we do to earn it, but it is the free uh, gift of God, uh, the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit that dwells. And St. Paul says, then we, we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit and we're able to then uh, uh, even St. Paul says we are no longer ours. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God because he has purchased us with the price. You see, he has, he has, he has, uh, 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 he has put a claim on us. Mm -hmm. He's put a claim on us that we don't belong to ourselves. So to, we can answer that question, to whom do we belong? Sure. We belong to Christ. And I could add on, if, if, uh, if, uh, if you permit me, that in addition to the uh, chrismation, then the, uh, again, in the life of the church, it leads us even further into the, uh, the sacrament of Holy Communion, okay. where we're sure. able to receive then the body and blood of Christ. So okay. it's a continual movement. So we're fed by Christ. We're fed by Christ. But before we're fed by Christ, we're also tonsured. Ta uh, correct. Okay. And the tonsuring is a cutting of hair, which shows our willingness to be obedient to God uh, and enslavement. Uh, but the alternative to being enslaved by God is to be enslaved by evil, to be caught up by, by the fallenness. Now, to protect us from that, when we're chrismated, we're chrismated over the senses. Um, we put the chrism on... On the eyes. Eyes. Right? The, the, uh, the mouth, the ears, the hands, uh, the feet, the, uh, the chest, the, the back. So we're sealed by the Holy Spirit over all of the senses that will take us anywhere or get us into trouble. <laughs> all the things that, you know, correct, correct. could, okay. And we're sealed by the Holy Spirit who stays inside. And then that chrism is washed off to show that the Holy Spirit lives inside. And, and, and so we don't need the outward oil anymore, but that we're enlivened uh, by God himself. All this for what? Again and again, we say, you know, for what? That's what again. It's it's a. I think there's a, there's a. It's it's an important statement we make in the church. You made a reference to that. A lot of times we have a lot of repetition, and yeah. that's that's uh, we are. It's repetition is necessary for us because again and again we find ourselves usually going in the wrong direction. Okay, and and, and we so need we need to, to repent and turn that around and and and, and refocus and, and come, come back. to our senses. Come to know? our senses, exactly. Our and, chrismated and, senses. And uh, there are many beautiful ways the church that allows us to do that. One is uh, fasting, for example, fasting in the church. So uh, we hear about the prodigal son. Remember who went away from his father, and it wasn't until he was forced to fast that he came to his senses in the oh, yeah. faraway land, and he realized. That the uh, that he could get food just from his father's house, yeah. and the servants had uh, the food. He knew it was time to go home. He knew it was exactly, exactly, All right. and was willing to come home as a servant, not That's as right. a son. That's right. But the father had a different plan. That's right. He greeted him and he embraced him as and took him back as his son. I guess what I'm asking you is, what does God need us for? I mean, does He really need us, or? It's the, What's uh, that it's, for? It, that is a mystery. It, God's love is a mystery. That he would go to such extremes to, uh, to love us and to save us. And that's uh, uh, the Lord is the one, it says, who leaves the, the, the 99 sheep and goes in search for the one who is lost, the one who is, has lost their way. It yeah. says, of course, in the scriptures that also that the angels rejoice in heaven over one person that repents. And sort of the opposite of... of, of um 
uh, what's expedient to, to give up one for many. Right, right, you know? right. But God wants us all and, and, and loves, us, loves us all. Uh, you're the dad of three sons. And, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, you're proving my point here. You know, you just mention the boys and you smile and, and you delight. And to imagine that God delights in us, That's, you know, in his creation, in the people that, that, he, that he calls and that he shares his life with and that the Holy Spirit is poured upon to, to interact with. How, how, how wonderfully, how wonderfully um, exciting. Well, I think the Lord teaches us, you know, we don't really appreciate our parents until we have children. Then sure. we really understand all that our parents went through uh, in, in the process of, of bringing us up. And again, you, how you mentioned how beautifully the Lord teaches us through life, how we then uh, begin to appreciate even more all the gifts and sacrifices that our parents made and our grandparents made uh, in bringing us up in the faith and so on in, in, our, in, our, uh, in our relationship with Christ looking at their examples as well and how they have guided us, uh, uh, guided me personally, and, and of course, uh, I'm sure everyone has those experiences mm -hmm. as well of guiding us, uh, uh, again, to whom do we belong by having the Lord as a, uh, as a kind of a cornerstone in our lives that we can uh, sure. uh, always uh, draw upon that grace and strength that we receive from our earliest days. We'll, back, we'll be back with uh, Father Michael to talk a little bit more about initiation and why the church and how the church initiates um, both infants and adults. Uh, but uh, first, Quaylin will have a guest to talk about um, uh, the guest's own personal experiences with coming into the faith. Do the Orthodox believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible? The Orthodox believe that the Bible conveys the inspired Word of God to us. So long as we interpret it according to the understanding we have received from the Fathers and the Councils. I'm Quayla Nassar and John Hogue is with me. You have found your way to Orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, how did you take that journey? Well, the journey for me sort of began about, uh, about seven years ago when my family had just moved from Canada to Michigan. And it was the beginning of the summer and I was kind of bored since I didn't know anybody. And at that point, my dad had been investigating orthodoxy sort of quietly for about, uh, for about 13 years. And so I picked a few books out of his library sort of at random and began to read them. And at the end of the summer, uh, I asked my dad if I could become orthodox and he said no. <laughs> and, and so that was sort of where, where, where things began for me. But he was exploring it for 13 years. Well, well yes. He, he didn't say no because he had anything against orthodoxy, but just at, at the time, uh, he was a Lutheran pastor, and he was sort of at a stage of thinking where he thought, we're both saying the same thing, we're just saying it in different ways. And so he, he, he told me no because there needs to be a dialogue between uh, the Orthodox and the Lutherans. And I said, fine, you dialogue from the Lutheran uh, side, and I'll, I'll dialogue, dialogue with you from the Orthodox side. Well, what drew you to orthodoxy then? Well, in, in the books that I read, which was, um, which, which was On the Unity of Christ by St. Kirill of Alexandria, uh, The Desert Fathers, and then The Brothers Karamazov, I sort of saw a, a, depth, uh, a depth and richness to the faith that I, that I hadn't really experienced before. Like, having, gr having grown up uh, Christian, I sort of knew all, all the essentials, but, but, uh, but in these books I saw them sort of brought to life and fleshed out, and I sort of met, met a living God. It versus what you were experiencing in your, well, you were Lutheran, obviously, at that time. You saw a living God. Uh -huh. And how did that impact you? How, when you felt that? Explain that to me. Well, I think the impact was, was one that sort of grew over time. Like, I think, I think uh, as, as much as I tease him about it, since, since now, um, now, my, now my dad is a priest, and so I tease him about... Uh, telling me that no, that I couldn't become Orthodox. But as much as I tease him about it, I think that it was probably wise because I didn't really have the depth of understanding that would have, that would have uh, been good at that point. And so the, the experience of a living God is something that's grown over time in the years that I had to wait and then in the time since becoming Orthodox. As, as I continue to meet uh, Orthodox people and, mm -hmm. and to travel and get to see people who live out that living God. 
So your, your father made that journey as well. Which of the two of you uh, became Orthodox first? Oh, we, we were all received as a family. As a family. Uh -huh. So that was wonderful. And you are thankful now that he sort of made you wait. Well, sort of. well, I, 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 if if he sees this, then I'll deny it. But but <laughs> I, but I but I am th thankful that uh, th that he made me wait a little bit. And we've been talking about who do you you know to whom do you belong? And if I were to ask you that question, what would you tell me as a as a converted Orthodox Christian? I I, I guess I would say what uh, what we always sing during uh, during th the the Paschal season and, and at any baptismal liturgy of as many have uh, been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. And then I think St. Paul says somewhere else, uh, you know, that, that if, we, if we have put on Christ, then we are Christ. And if we are Christ, then we no longer belong to the world. So you belong to Christ. Do you think that the, your, in your experience as, a, as a, con, a convert to Orthodoxy, when you meet and you've talked to those who are cradle Orthodox, have you seen the same type of passion that you feel? Um, I, I guess I would say that, uh, that just like among converts, it, de it depends on the person. That, um, that, I, that, I've seen, that I've seen a lot of uh, Orthodox people who have really reflected that passion and zeal for the truth. And of course, there are always some people who, who were sort of born into it but never uh, took it as more than a cultural thing. But, but you have that with any faith. But I, I have met a lot of cradle people uh, who have really uh, shown love for uh, shown forth love for Christ and and zeal for the faith. And thank you for showing your zeal with us this evening and My this pleasure. afternoon. And Father John Abdullah and Father Michael Kalor are going to be right back with you. They're going to continue talking about the sacraments of initiation. Who is the head of the Orthodox Church? The easy answer is. Jesus Christ. However, the Orthodox Church is a fellowship of earthly churches with earthly leaders. The senior of these leaders is the Patriarch of Constantinople, now Istanbul in Turkey. We're very fortunate to have Father Michael Kulor back with us. Father Michael is the pastor of Epapendi, a presentation of Christ Church in East Pittsburgh. Uh, Father Michael, John spoke about his whole family coming into the church together. And we read in the book of Acts that whole households, infants, slaves, everybody together were baptized into Christ and, and put on Christ. And that's something that we don't see all the time today, uh, but it certainly is, is exciting. Definitely. The, uh, we, uh, the Orthodox faith uh, practice, as you know, infant baptism from the earliest time we uh, want the child to, uh, to be uh, received into the church, become full members, full communicants, because we know this is a gift given by God. It's not based on any, any merit or any intellectual capacity, but it's based on the gift to free uh, God's desire to be in communion with us. So grace and the Holy Spirit are gifts from God. They're not things that you earn or that you need to sign off on as, as uh, in some kind of intellectual way. But we do right. need to commit ourselves to Christ, and we need to uh, express our, our baptism. And, and, and how do we, you know, sometimes we mess up and make mistakes and fall away and, and make bad choices, sometimes as children, sometimes even as, as adults. Uh, so what, do we get baptized again, or what do we do? Well, we be, as we say in the Creed, we believe in one baptism, obviously in the name of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the fathers of the church talk about a second baptism, and this is the baptism through holy confession, and that the tears of confession are a recommitment of us, like a second baptism, baptism washing away our sins, and, they re, uh, and that allows us then to rededicate our lives to Christ. So through the sacrament of holy confession, and then of course also the, uh, along with holy confession, of course we would say holy communion, uh, these two sacraments then can put us back on the right path uh, uh, in, in, in uh, clarifying for us to whom we belong. I think Christianity is the only faith that really talks about being born anew, uh, having these new starts. And these new starts aren't simply a washing, but a recreation, a brand new start, a, 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 a new beginning. And so these sacraments of, of initiation are... are um, 
uh, repeated, sort of, you know, not the actual uh, baptism again or chrismation again, right. but the forgiveness, the renewal, the molding in God's hands. Um, my, my favorite is the illustration of, of the pot. And when a pot gets a crack in it, you can wash it all day long and it's still the same uh, pot with a crack in it. But if you take this cracked pot and you crush it mm -hmm. and you add with it new clay and you spin it again mm -hmm. and you put it back in the kiln, now you have a new pot. Right. Somehow we Christians today want to be new pots without the work, without mm -hmm. being crushed, without really doing the, the hard work of owning up to our sins, owning up to our experiences and changing and, and growing. Uh, uh, would you reflect from your personal ministry sure. that's, it's, on, it's, on that? Spiritual growth, as you know, is a very difficult thing uh, to go through. And it requires a lot of effort, a lot of uh, 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 seeking, searching of one's soul, and a, a lot of uh, uh, prayer, a lot of uh, introspection, a lot of uh, guidance even, having a spiritual father to guide you and to uh, help you grow in certain ways. Uh, obviously, uh, which you mentioned about the, the crushing. Nobody likes to be crushed, but sometimes it's necessary. Uh, there's a, uh, a story told by uh, Victor Hugo, and I just throw this in because he, uh, had this, uh, he, he was coming from dinner, it says one time, and he saw one of these big bumblebees, like a, a queen bee, that was by the window. And the bee kept, as you know, with the, the bugs, they like to hit the window, and he wanted to get the bug out of the window so it could fly and be free. But the more he tried to guide the bug down to, the, to lower it to get it out the window, the more it resisted and it was going to bite him. So finally he had to smack it down and then lift it up and throw it out the window and carry it down. And again, none of us likes to go through that process. Sometimes we keep hitting our heads against the wall or we keep doing things that push us further away from God. And it's not until we uh, have someone help, uh, kind of correct us and guide us in that right direction, as you mentioned, that we're able to see, we're able to get through the open window, we're able to kind of be free from that particular struggle or that particular uh, uh, issue that we're, we're dealing with. Uh, Father, w when I went to seminary, Professor Vorhovsko used to say that we're all converts. Mm -hmm. And within the church today, you know, we have people who have um, converted to the church who sometimes seem more, uh, f have more fervor and excitement and, and um, we put ourselves in different categories and, mm -hmm. and all the like. But Professor Vorhovskoy used to say we're all converts. We all need to say yes to Jesus Christ. We all need to ded really dedicate ourselves to him and, and, uh, and to grow. Uh, we're all initiated into the same body without, without ranks, you know. Uh, an infant or a, and a parish council chairman have, right. yeah. are both equal, equally members of, right. of the body of Christ. They receive the Eucharist and they stand together with a company of, of saints without ranks, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, even uh, for us, we have bishops and priests have different roles in the church. But we're all Christians, you know. We all wear the baptismal robe, the stickari, and the altar boy, the the sure. new bap newly baptized, the bishop, the patriarch. The, you know, we're all uh, members of the same right. same Before body. Before God, there is no rank. It's all everyone's equal, as as we says, uh, Saint Paul says. And and how God loves us, and it's Amen. all a a response to his, his, his love. And that, it's, it's absolutely true. Every opportunity we have to rededicate ourselves in that way. We have to constantly, again, to whom do we belong? We have to keep focusing and reorienting ourselves to that. Uh, to that uh, and of course, the icons and all the things that we have in the church help us, remind us to whom we belong and, and the, 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 the path that, which is sometimes can be very difficult. That one of the things I hear a lot from visitors to the church is you folks certainly say again and again a lot, you know, but it's again and again. Let us commit ourselves and each other to our Savior. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that just happens once. That's something that, uh, that we do more than once an hour, you know, that we're constantly doing and we're reliving and, and redoing. Every, every liturgical experience that we have, we have that call to the altar, the call to, you know, the, with the fear of God, with faith and with love 
draw near, the altar call, the, the Lord calling us to participate in the, again, in, in a rededication of our lives to Him. And I think that's uh, something that uh, sometimes may be overlooked, but that's a constant thing that we have to, like you mentioned, we have to again and again uh, 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 experience in order to uh, grow spiritually. You know, every time that I've, I've been with Father Michael, I've, I've felt that fervor and excitement for Jesus Christ. And, and I hope that, uh, that the listeners of our show today catch some of that spirit and excitement to really dedicate themselves to the Savior. Father John, why did you answer to whom did we, do I belong? So wrap it up for us tonight. Well, we belong to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ has come to us. We belong to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ seals us and works in our lives. We belong to Jesus Christ because we say yes to him. And if you'd like to learn more about the Orthodox faith, tune into Orthodoxy Now on the radio on Wednesday mornings at 9.30 on 8.10 on your AM dial, or to Orthodoxy Now on television on Comcast On Demand, or on the Christian Associates Channel 95 in the city of Pittsburgh. And if you'd like to learn more about Orthodoxy or have a question that you'd like to ask us, write to us at the address on your screen or... On the internet, orthodoxynowtv.com. Thanks for being with us.